Hi, my name's Jack. And I'm Alexandra. In this video, we're going to be talking about observations. So we're going to talk a little bit about why we do observations. We're going to talk about how we do observations on tapestry and then a bit about monitoring. So Jack, in the new EYFS, obviously it's steering away from data. So uh, why do we still need to observe? So these observations that you make are still really important because we, we've cut back on that very excessive paperwork, which really steered us away from the, the child centers practice. Now we're steering back into that. So the reason that you're making these observations is very clear is to directly help the children in your class. And the observations that you make do this in a number of ways. First of all, they're really great for sharing with parents. So to keep that parent practitioner child loop going, the observations are really key in that cycle. The other reason is as a practitioner, you can then look back at your observations retrospectively to help inform your provision. So thinking about tapestry specifically, how do we go about making observations? So we can add observations both on the browser and on our iOS and Android apps. When you add an observation to the journal, that means that the child's parents are going to be able to see that. Or if I'm adding an observation for staff, for example, if a child is struggling in a certain area, but we haven't discussed that with the relative yet, so you don't want them to be visible until you've had that discussion, you can always add your observation as staff only, and then the child's relatives won't see that until it is in journal. If you send out your observations in bulk at the end of a week, on Friday, for example, you can always add your observations as and when they appear during the week and then schedule them so that they will get added to journal in bulk on the Friday. Another great thing about observations is that they are customizable. So you can add all sorts of different file types that you might come across, such as videos, PDFs, Word documents, any sort of common file that you might want to add to an observation. You can do that on Tapestry as well. If I want to send out a message or a notice to my child's relatives, um, I wouldn't necessarily do that on, as an observation though. Um, you can always add that as a memo because then once those are published, they aren't going to be added to your child's journal, unlike observations. Great, so now we've got the main bulk of our observation, but Jack, if I wanted to use my observation for monitoring as well, how do I go about that on Tapestry? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can monitor on Tapestry using observations. The first thing I'm gonna very briefly talk about is that you can do bespoke frameworks on Tapestry now. So you can upload pretty much any framework of your own to Tapestry and use that on observations now. You can also make your own flag sets. If you're not familiar with flag sets already, they're a bit like labels that you can add to observations and you can create as many flag sets as you want about anything you want. And these flag sets can provide an at-a-glance view when looking at your observations. One of the most commonly used flag sets on Tapestry is the EYFS 2021 flag set. Now, if you don't already have this enabled on your account or, or you just want to have a bit of a look at it before you decide to do so, you can find it by going to the control panel, settings, and then flags. Now within the flag set, we have the seven development matters areas. And then if you'd like to as well, you can also enable the birth to five aspects underneath these areas. So now you've got the EYFS 2021 flag set enabled on your account, you can find it when you start making an observation. So you click new observation, you can scroll down to the flag section and you'll see it at EYFS 2021. You'll notice it's no longer an assessment framework like it used to be on Tapestry. So when you click this flag set, you will see the seven areas of learning, which are outlined in the new Development Matters document. And uh, as Alex said before, if you've enabled birth to five matters within six of the areas, you'll see the aspects within those as well. The first major thing you'll probably notice with this is that there's no longer statements within these aspects to tick. The reason that we've done it this way is because we work very closely with the authors of Development Matters. and to keep more in keeping with the ethos of those documents, we remove the ability to tick statements and now all you do is you flag the area of learning that this specific observation pertains to. Those statements that aren't completely gone though because you will find the full documentation in the reference material section which is just next to the flags. So some of you might be thinking you've added a flag but I can't add a statement so what is the point of me adding this flag to the observation? Well, that's a great question, and it actually brings us back to one of the first points we made about why we're adding observation, one being it's a memory jog. So when we come to assess our child using the areas of concern screen, all of the observations that we flagged with our EYFS 2021 flags will pull through to this tracking screen. You can find the areas of concern screen by going to the tracking tab at the top and then to EYFS 2021 
and then areas of concern. Now here you'll see that we've got two tracking screens on that. We've got the guided view and the group view. The areas of concern screen is kind of the central hub for all your monitoring to do with the UIFS 2021. Um, as Alex mentioned, all your observations that you flag will pull through to this screen so you can easily access them. And you'll be able to choose between three options. So you've got review, you've got concerns, and you've got no concerns. And those buttons are under each of the seven areas of learning for each child. So what do these buttons mean? Put very simply, review means that you haven't quite decided yet and you're going to look at some other evidence. You might talk to another outside professional. You might talk to parents. You might do some more work with that child in that area just to see what your uh, judgment at that point is going to be. The concerns button is uh, quite self-explanatory. It means that you have some kind of concern in this area. So the provision that you are providing for this child in that area needs to be changed in some way. And the last one is no concerns, which again is quite self-explanatory. It just means that the provision you've put in place for this child is working as you expect it. And the child is working at the developmental level that you expect them to work at at that point in time. The Areas of Concern screen was built with the ethos of the framework in mind, with it being a child-centered approach. So if you see that a child is on no concerns throughout the whole year, that's absolutely fine. You'll notice under each of the areas, there's a blue button called Timeline. Now this shows you exactly when these buttons, these no concerns, concerns review buttons were changed, if they have been changed, and also the date in which they were changed. So it's a good way of showing progress. For example, if you had a child on a concerns in an area, and then you changed some of your provision based on what you observed, and then you moved them over to no concerns, the timeline would then show that change. So what does this whole process look like in practice? Well, let's take an example. So you see a child in your class and they're struggling with something. So you make an observation, You again, you can add notes, you can add media, whatever you need to do in there. But the important thing is that you use those purple UFS 2021 flags and you flag the area that this observation is about. After that, you'll go to the areas of concern screen. That observation will have pulled through to that specific area and you can mark that child as concerns. We haven't talked about reflections in this video yet, so we're just going to talk about it very briefly. So an important thing to note about reflections are that it's a staff only feature on Tapestry. So anything you add to a reflection is not ever going to be visible to a child's relatives. Reflections are designed to be an organic document that you're not necessarily going to complete there and then when you create it, but that you can come back to to edit and modify as time goes on. So as mentioned, that reflections aren't visible to relatives. The sharing options that you've got for a reflection is that it's visible to the author and all staff members or just the author and managers. If you add your reflection from the areas of concern screen, then the relevant EYFS 2021 flag will already be attached to it. So the main body of your reflection is going to be you writing about how you're changing your provision for this child to so enable them to move on from their concerns to no concerns. One of the benefits of reflections is also, as mentioned before, is you can share them with the other staff that you're setting, which uh, gives you more insights into this particular area. Other staff might have ideas that you can use on how to alter your provision. And uh, there's also a button where you can say it's ready for discussion, which gives uh, the staff a prompt to go and do that. So at this point, you might want to go back to the areas of concern screen and mark that child as review. If you then observe the child and you can see that they're really responding to those changes you've made to your provision, then great. And you can go back and you can mark them as no concerns. So now that we've done that, we can go back to our reflection. And at the bottom there, you'll find that there's a box to input the impact of your reflection. You also notice at the bottom there's a links box. Here, you can link all of the relevant observations to your reflection. So we've looked at the why and the how of using observations on Tapestry and for monitoring. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to use this. All of these tools we've talked about today are on Tapestry to use if you'd like to, but they're all there just to make your life easier. We really hope you found this video helpful. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at customer.service at eyfs.info.